Hey guys, how's it going? This is XY97 here. Welcome back to another episode of the Mega ABCs. Today is the second episode where we will be using Mega Absol. If you didn't know, the Mega ABCs is a series on the channel where we use every Mega in alphabetical order until we've made a video on all of them. Mega Absol is interesting. Its ability changes into Magic Bounce after Mega Evolving, which is really weird for such an offensive Mon. I mean, Absol, even when Mega, doesn't really have the best bulk, so I don't know why Magic Bounce was really the ability they gave to it, but it's a good ability nonetheless. Its attack stat becomes massive, I'm pretty sure it's a whopping 150, and its special attack stat also increases a decent amount, so we will be using Ice Beam on Absol for coverage, because its special attack is good enough to warrant that. So, if you guys do enjoy, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps out the channel, and we're almost at 400 subscribers. Thank you guys so much, and enjoy the video. So, getting into the first battle here, we send out Tyranitar against a Lando T, who proceeds to Earthquake as we set up our Stealth Rocks. Switch into Rotom Heat, and the U-Turn. So, we send in Tyranitar first, so that we can set up the Sand, which activates Dracozolt Sand Rush if we ever send him out. Uh, they go Heatran, I guess to deal with Rotom, as I trick on my Choice Scarf to Heatran, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, in this situation, it works out. We go Excadrill. Um, instead of them going Earth Power, they just switch out, but alright. We Swords Dance, and I use Breakneck Blitz to kill the Tapu Fini. Instead of... Iron Head because I was predicting a switch into Zapdos, but that's not what happened, so it's too bad, but it worked out in the end, kind of. We do a Hidden Power Ice on Lando T, and that takes him out in one hit. Four times weakness is no joke. Heatran misses a Magma Storm as we Volt Switch out, getting a giant chunk of damage. We send in Tyranitar, but unfortunately, he immediately dies, which does not set up the sand. So, Drake's ult is not going to be as fast as I'd hoped he'd be. So, I tricked back my own choice scarf and did a hidden power ice, hoping they'd go Zapdos again, but they did not. So, I'm going to stop predicting that they're going to go Zapdos and just close combat. And then they go Venusaur, so I guess they were not planning on Zapdos anytime soon. I sucker punch because Absol is going down to an earth power. The featured Mega is already down, don't worry, he will do better in other battles. I get a lucky flinch and a crit, the crit didn't matter, but it's still crazy either way. And yeah, we're not staying in against a Weavile with Excadrill, so you can triple Axel all you want on my Tapu Fini, and get unlucky by not even getting the three hits. Send in your Zapdos as I Calm Mind. Zapdos should deal with me pretty well, but since I'm a Calm Mind set, well, you already know we're going to just keep spamming Call Mind. Surprisingly, they went for Ancient Power before going for Thunderbolt, but yeah, they get a lucky crit and it almost kills, but now they're in a horrible position with just Weavile against the Tapu Fini, who's at 2.5 times Special Attack and Special Defense. All they can do is knock off, which does not do too much, as we finish them off with a Draining Kiss, and that is all. GG, well played. Alright, so we're into the second game, and I send out Tyranitar again, trying the same strat once again as their Keldeo flip turns. Luckily, because if they had done uh, Secret Sword, that would have killed for sure. I'm guessing. Four times super effective hits as I said earlier, are no joke. Uh, Dracozolt takes about nothing from Corviknight, and Victini loses everything to Bolt Beak, as we go into Excadrill on the Gengar, who uses Substitute, which is surprising. I go Earthquake, and the Gengar decides to Shadow Ball, which does 60%, but this Gengar is not faster than a Sandstream Excadrill, but they go Corv as I go Earthquake. Pretty predictable play, but smart nonetheless. They do Body Press, kills my Excadrill, not sure why his Swords Dance there, but I couldn't do much damage anyways. Probably should have just switched. Uh, they go Blissey, as I Volt Switch with Rotom, going into Absol, predicting the Blissey, because I know if you send out a Special Attacker, they are sending out Blissey. I knock off the Absol, which 
Um, was supposed to hit the Blissey, but I think it would have been safer to just close combat. I was predicting Gengar possibly on a close combat. But we do get the kill on their Mega Absol, which is great using close combat. Because they try using Sucker Punch for whatever reason. Well, back to what's happening now. The Gengar attempted to sub. It did not work. Our Scalds are doing a lot. They curse body us. Tapu Fini's going to have to go down to a Sludge Wave. Might have carried us last game in the end game, but not today. We send out Tyranitar. And as Gengar tries to escape, we use Pursuit. Which, if you didn't know, does double damage if the target is switching out. And it hits before the target switches out. So Gengar is gone. In comes Keldeo against Rotom. Which one shots with Scald, and this actually is not the best position. Dracozult one shots Blissey with Bolt Beak. Bolt Beak is an insane move. If you go first, that is. We survive a secret sword, thankfully, to the Choice Scarf Keldeo. In comes the Corviknight, and wouldn't you believe it, Bolt Beak one shots Corviknight, and that's game. GG's well played.